am Sue Miller, your Illinois Realtors 2021 president. And I am joined today by Peter DeYoung, the 2021 president of Greater Chicago Chapter of the Asian Real Estate Association of America, or what we all shorten to, ARIA. Today, we're gonna to spend a little time getting to know more about Peter, my friend, and the great work of ARIA in Illinois. Well, thank you, Sue, for welcoming me. I, I before, I'm really honored to be here uh, and, and spend a little bit of time with you. But before we get to our chat, uh, we're gonna show you a quick video about ARIA. Founded in 2003, the Asian Real Estate Association of America, or ARIA, represents a large network of real estate professionals dedicated to promoting sustainable home ownership opportunities in Asian American communities. In less than two decades, ARIA has quickly grown to more than 17,000 members and 41 chapters across the United States and Canada, including the Illinois chapter, also known as Greater Chicago. ARIA releases an annual State of Asia America report as a resource for industry professionals and decision makers and has notched major policy accomplishments in recent years. The Greater Chicago Chapter has an impressive track record of volunteerism and community service. The annual State of Asia America Report is a compilation of data relating to Asian American and Pacific Islanders. It includes housing, demographics, education, income, and policy information. According to the most recent report, the Asian American housing rate was 57.6% in 2020, while the Pacific Islander housing rate was lower at 42.3%. In the context of the global coronavirus pandemic, the report also provides the story of Asia America, a historical perspective on the struggles and accomplishments of the AA and PI community. The demographics presented in the State of Asia America report are robust because of ARIA's greatest policy accomplishments to date, the No Other campaign. Prior to July of 2016, the U.S. Census Bureau did not even collect specific data on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. When it came time for members of the AA and PI community to indicate race during a census, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders had to choose other. ARIA's No Other campaign sought more effective housing and home ownership policies for the AA and PI community through accurate collection of data. Illinois Realtor and ARIA leader, Vicki Silvano, played an influential role in the campaign, meeting with members of the Asian American Congressional Caucus and the director of the U.S. Census Bureau. In addition to influencing national policies, Greater Chicago has an impressive track record of regional and neighborhood service. Recently, Greater Chicago collaborated with Illinois Realtors to translate two popular consumer guides and to help bridge a language gap for Chinese and Vietnamese speaking consumers and help them on their path to home ownership. In 2020, Greater Chicago's Feed the Frontline initiative provided hundreds of meals to Chicagoland hospital workers. The meals provided a boost to healthcare workers and were sourced from restaurants struggling under the burden of the COVID-19 pandemic. To grow your network with an engaging and community-focused industry partner, join ARIA Greater Chicago. To join, navigate to areaa.org backslash Greater Chicago and select the Join Us button. Peter, thank you so much for bringing that short documentary about ARIA to our, our viewers and our watchers. So many people have no idea of the many small groups that function within our membership. And that's part of these segments is to really educate them about what's going on amongst our members and ARIA being just one of the many and one of the special groups that I've come to know through you and your predecessors of leaders. So thank you so much for bringing that to us and to the members in whole through the celebrations that we have. But we're here today to get to know you because you, my friend, 
are, are super special. So I'm happy that we, we have this moment to chat. For starters, you are one of the current presidents of what we call our industry partners. And you're the first one that I've gotten to talk to this year who's also outside of a practitioner and from our mortgage world, so finance. You've had a super stellar accomplished career in finance. So why are you in that hectic world called real estate finance lending? Tell me more. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, I'm dating myself now. I, I like to say that I'm on the back nine, not in the clubhouse. I'm after, I'm over 50, uh, but I've been in the mortgage lending uh, space now for about 30 years. And um, wh when you're in mortgage lending, uh, it, it the joy comes with helping people achieve home ownership and uh, helping them with their financial goals. So um, somehow after college, uh, that's where I uh, gravitated towards and I've basically called that my career. And as part of that, um, I I've been able to also connect with other trade organizations that have like-minded, like philosophies and serving communities. And ARIA represented that for me. Um, I, I, my father was very involved in languages and cultures from around the world. He was a professor. And so ARIA just seemed to be a natural fit for me. And uh, I joined ARIA in 2006. ARIA was formed in 2003. Um, uh, clearly, you do not need to be American, Asian, Pacific Islander to be a part of ARIA. Um, uh, I am the first Caucasian president of the ARIA Chicago chapter, but I'm not the first Caucasian president in, in all the chapters around the country. Um, we currently have 43 chapters. We have 17,000 members nationwide. And uh, it's an honor to uh, you know, work with uh, my fellow colleagues uh, serving our community. I'm going to let you expand a little. You talked about your father, and I know your mother is also an educator. Um, you're, you're raising four boys. Uh, t tell me about that and your service as a mortgage guy and your long hours and not only that career, but your volunteer leadership, how are you managing balancing your real career as a mortgage guy, your volunteer leadership as president of ARIA and, and four, four boys, which my gosh, they're, let's see if I have to remember correctly, they're all teenagers now, aren't they? They, they all are teenagers. One is soon to be 20 this coming summer. He is a uh, sophomore at the University of Illinois studying engineering, and we're real proud of Derek. Um, my high schoolers are Jacob and Liam. They're twins. They're in the middle, and they are currently sophomores going into their junior uh, year for high school, and very different. Uh, my twins are not identical, and they're different in every possible way. One is very into sports and the other one is more into music and drama. Um, and then my youngest is 13 and uh, he's just kind of a happy, happy go lucky kid, Ryan. He just kind of falls along doing what his brothers do. Um, but thankfully um, our, our family's healthy. Uh, my spouse is a uh, pediatric, uh, pediatric oncologist, hematologist at the University of Chicago. We live in Chicago in the Hyde Park neighborhood so that my spouse can be close to serving her, uh, her families and her patients. And um, we do it together. Um, we would not be able to do what we do um, without the support of each other. And we also have um, the support of caregivers as well. So uh, luckily my boys are starting to get to be a little bit more independent. My, uh, one of my high schoolers is now able to drive. Uh, so that is is making things a little bit uh, easier for us. Um, but uh, we we frequently review our calendars in the morning and in the evening and then again in the morning, just trying to make sure we have it all right. Well, flexibility is the key to success, that's for sure. But in, in that description of your four, I noticed that none of them are following in your political science major footsteps and nobody's going to be a political science junkie or a political junkie like <laughs> us. So are you, you feeling a little bad about that? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, um, I met my spouse, Jill, 
in college at the University of Chicago, and she was pre-med at the time, and she um, obviously values science and math, and uh, a lot of our children have followed in the, kind of that direction, uh, although it remains to be seen. Liam, our uh, musical drama, I think he could, he could find his way into uh, sociology or political science, something along those lines. That remains to be seen. Um, but uh, whatever, I, I, I'm for learning whatever you want to learn and just apply yourself and make an impact. And whatever that might be, whether it's political science or science or math, just do it. Well, I know that you're a lifelong learner, so I appreciate that comment, that whatever they learn and whatever their passion they find, they're going to pursue. But I do know that you are a political junkie, as am I. So I, I'm going to ask the question, are you finding that your involvement with ARIA is satisfying your political need and your political interests? Do you think it's challenging enough being that leader for ARIA? Yeah, I would say uh, being a part of a trade organization, um, it pushes you to be active, um, to not necessarily sit back and um, accept whatever news or whatever um, event might come in. It requires you to listen. It requires you to be respectful and, and think through what is happening and then take action. Um, so, for example, in the last month, um, we were involved in a lot of the uh, Stop the Asian Hate Crimes um, events that have been unfortunately going through our country. And that's not unique to the AAPI community. It's happened with many um, cultures and many uh, socioeconomic and racial lines throughout the years. This is nothing new, but it really kind of reached a boiling point within the AAPI community in the last six months. And so um, you know, that led us to, uh, you know, go to uh, uh, respectful protests or, um, you know, hear community leaders speak. Um, the one that I attended was in early, um, uh, or excuse me, mid-March, and it was uh, in Chinatown on a Saturday. So you're just giving more of your time, being involved, supporting others uh, in, the, in, in whatever event they might be. So, I would say that being a part of a trade organization requires you to be active, not passive. And we see that specifically with the segmented or the, the spe specialty trade organizations. So outside of the most recent social events that like you've identified, what are some of the other issues that face ARIA on a national or local level that you could speak to or what other involvement or recent accomplishments does the greater Chicago area ARIA group have or have they taken on or tackled recently? Yeah, I would say one that really comes to mind um, and it, it involves um, many, many of our members, I would say 70% of our members in Chicago ARIA are realtors by trade. Uh, the other 30% would either be lenders, title companies, attorneys. But um, one of the things that we uh, as an organization need to continually sort of educate is that there's sometimes this belief that the AAPI community simply represents the wealthy. Um, and the reality of it is just like any, um, any, any group, uh, we have a diversity of socioeconomics um, from small business, cash-oriented businesses, all the way up to the affluent, just like every other segment. So, you know, while it's nice that uh, Hollywood will occasionally uh, start to promote movies and incorporate American, Asian, Pacific Islanders into their, into their uh, media, but movies like Crazy Rich Asians um, sometimes can cause uh, misnomers or thinking, people think that, that you know, the AAPI community doesn't need support. And the reality of it is, um, in the AAPI community, many uh, people still face discrimination over housing. Um, they're challenged with being able to get approved for housing, um, just like everybody else. So we continually offer programming to help um, 
overcome those obstacles. Uh, another obstacle could be language barriers. So um, those are those are some things that come to mind immediately. Um, and then over the past couple of generations of leadership, a part of ARIA, uh, my good colleague, uh, Vicki Silvano, when she was the national president of ARIA, she helped uh, change the, the census and some of the, um, the data reporting. Uh, there was a campaign called No Other because Asians were simply, uh, Asian American Pacific Islanders were simply lumped into an other campaign. There was no statistics about information. And now that that has changed, thanks to Vicki's leadership and many of the people that supported that leadership. Um, we now have a lot more data that, that coming from census and, and being able to understand how we support the AAPI community in various communities. And, you know, things like um, the State of Asia report, which if you go to the ARIA website, aria.org, you can see access to the State of Asia report and you can see that the AAPI community is, is vast. It's all over the United States. It's not just on the coast. It's not just San Francisco. It's not just New York City. It's actually in places like North Dakota. It's, it's in places like Memphis. It's, it's everywhere. So it's becoming a part of the fabric of America. I was uh, quite surprised. I had attended one of your events and I think you were speaking about that and um, how the expected gateways were not quite as we expected and that Chicago is very much an AAPI gateway. Once you knew the data, you were surprised at how many people come through Chicago as their entry point to America. Um, and until Vicki and her crew made that data available, we had no idea. Um, That's true. So I thought that was awesome once we knew that that was a Realtor created new data set. Um, so yay, kudos to one of us and one of our efforts that we were able to really get some good drawn down data to get a brand new idea. So that was awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Peter. So clearly ARIA does some awesome things with their group and their volunteers, but Tell me why you got involved with ARIA at the way beginning. You obviously spoke to, it was a great organization. There was a lot of energy, but what really drew you to that group? Yeah, you know, I joined ARIA when I was working in Boston in 2006. And um, initially, um, I think for many people that are that are uh, that just say fi affiliate industries to the real estate industry, such as lenders, a lot of times um, you will join an organization as part of networking and business development. That might be the initial reason. Uh, for me, that was certainly part of it, but there was also a piece of honoring my father. My father. I uh, grew up in rural Illinois, where Missouri, Illinois, and Iowa come together right on Lock and Dam number 19. And, um, you know, when he grew up, it wasn't a very diverse place. But my father then became a German Fulbright scholar. He went to the University of Vienna. He met my mother from England. And he, all, it, it, he then came back to the University of Chicago and then on to the University of Minnesota, where he did his doctorate. And well, growing up in Minnesota, um, my dad was a big believer that we celebrate being American, but we also respect and celebrate the cultures of the world. And my dad taught five languages. And so I was always exposed to other cultures. Um, it was just natural. So when I was nine years old, I lived in Switzerland for a year because my dad did a sabbatical. Um, so for me, when I, when I engaged Aria initially as part of maybe business development, I felt as a way, in a way that I was sort of honoring my father's uh, desires and in, in the way we live life. So that was number one. But what's kept me at Aria is the fact that I've developed a lot of relationships. And so now I don't even look at it. I mean, I know it's a trade organization. It's become a family. I mean, uh, we, we cry together. We celebrate together. We, we pursue initiatives together. We help people together. Um, you know, it's just, it's just the way of life. And so um, that's why 
you know, when we talk to potential people that might want to be more involved and become active, initially it's sort of let me dip the let me dip my toes in and see. I don't want to get too involved too quickly, but then it just kind of happens naturally, and um, so that's what's kept me staying is is it's become a family. Well, and that's a great segue right into my next question because we're currently celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month which is really about family. And as you have grown your family into the AAPI world, how are you gonna celebrate? And what is your family doing to celebrate your new extended family and the heritage of the AAPI community outside of eating the way cool food, which I love when I come to your events, just the amazing entrees that are offered. So what are you and your family going to do with your new family and your extended family? Well, it's funny. Uh, just yesterday, my youngest son, Ryan, uh, came into the house and he was adorning a new jersey. And it turns out the jersey was the national jersey for Japan, their soccer team. And uh, apparently he, he had received this jersey from uh, one of his classmates who, who is now grown out of this jersey. So we're reusing uh, materials, which is great. Um, but uh, for me, when I look at how I incorporate my family uh, who are active and involved in sports and different things, and how do I incorporate that in with what I do at work and, and other things, for me, it often involves sports, and um, I'm a hockey coach. I currently coach a team of which I think that the team has 15 players on it. Five of the players represent the AAPI community. So for me, we, we just like to – we have the Olympics coming up. We have um, – we just look for opportunities to experience the world, and a lot of that has to be through the AAPI lens. Of course, we always enjoy eating the food. That is a given. Um, and when I get a chance to hang out with people like Tuen, Tuyen Nguyen, or our past president, who also is a restaurateur, and she can teach me about some of the finer uh, points of uh, food, we're gonna, we're gonna go there as well. So um, that's, that's what I like to do, is, is I celebrate coming together through sport. That's just what we do. That's awesome. And, and thank you for bringing in the, the thought of celebrating through sport, through food, through the Olympics, through the thought of world harmony, because really that's what that's all about. And it's not about pointing out our differences. It's about pointing out our similarities. And that's really, it's really what we are doing. We're celebrating each other and we're celebrating our unity, which is awesome. So let's shift gears a little bit, because now you're the president of ARIA. And think about your members. And if you had to tell us, the big audience here, what do your members love about your organization? Well, I think one of the things that comes to mind for sure is that within the AAPI culture and community, education is front and center. It is, it is very, very, it's culturally important, no matter what economic level you might be at education is really important. And so that was another reason why it became, both my parents were educators. My dad was a college professor. My mother was a grade school teacher. So, um, you know, when you look at our membership, they find a lot of value in coming together and celebrating our passion for education, but then also looking for programming that can fulfill that. We all need to be coached. Um, we, and continue to learn. And so um, that's, you know, and I, in fact, in, in two days from now, we have the um, Diversity and Fair Housing Summit, the National ARIA Diversity and Fair Housing Summit. I have no doubt that I am going to be the recipient of just some incredible information. Um, I'll probably be humbled. Um, so you know, that's front and center for our membership. They really like hearing about programming and then how to use that to support whatever initiative they might be involved with. Um, you know, I think of, 
uh, one of our members, Andy, and, and a board member, Andy Gaston. Andy is one of the most passionate, you know, he's always organizing food drives to give back. Um, he has an incredible story of, of how his background and, and growing up as a young person here in the United States, um, and I won't steal his thunder on that, but it's, it's, it's really heartwarming. So he gives back of himself. So, um, you know, it's education, giving back, and then developing friends and, and, and supporting each other in, in our walks of life. I, I think you've nailed it. Every, every event that I've gone to, it has been really an amazing event about learning culture, learning something new about volunteering, always moving the industry forward, helping another, and most importantly, building relationships. I think you've nailed it right there about your membership, and that is awesome. So for those who are listening who aren't members, how would they become a member? What do they do next? There's a lot of ways to become a member. So first and foremost, you could go to the national website, which is aria.org, A-R-E-A-A.org. And you could find uh, on the national website, you could find the various chapters and you could select Greater Chicago and it would allow you to become a member there. However, sometimes computers and things like that can be a little impersonal and maybe the person who really wants to check out ARIA would like to you know, talk to somebody first. And we're fortunate enough at the Chicago um, ARIA chapter to have um, Chris Oswald uh, Chris works at Greater Illinois Title, and he is our uh, current membership chair. And Chris and his team, um, he has a committee team. Wendy Reyes is on that team. Wendy is a, a, a realtor at Berkshire Hathaway. They do an awesome job just connecting to people who might have an interest uh, in, in understanding uh, the benefits of our ARIA, but also the cost structure. And the cost structure, for those of you that maybe don't know, it's, it's basically $99 a year and it starts July 1st through June 30th. So right now, if somebody were to join, they literally would be paying, I think, $25 or less. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's an amazing, um, it's, it's very affordable. Um, so um, I invite everyone to check it out. Um, we are having, uh, we'll be having an event on May 20th, celebrate uh, more, uh, uh, the Air, American Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, and then we're also um, getting ready for the summer months where we're kind of thinking that maybe things will start to open up. Obviously, we're coming out of the pandemic. We want to be respectful of whatever the regulations and laws and, and challenges that everybody has. But we're hoping to get back to some um, more face-to-face, elbow-to-elbow sharing of information rather than Zoom. And so stay tuned for that. And then we're working on some programming involving um, home buyer education as well with some of our uh, sponsors. So um, please, please check that out. But yeah, I would say go to the website, maybe learn a little bit. And then last but not least, if you can't get a hold of Chris or you can always call, you can always reach Peter DeYoung or just go to the website, the Chicago chapter, and you'll, you'll be able to reach me and I'm happy to facilitate you getting connected to ARIA. Before I wrap us up, I want to ask you one more personal question because I know you're a lifelong learner. What book are you reading? And tell me how important it is in making your future bright. Well, that's, that's easy. Uh, I'm actually reading uh, two books right now. So the, the, um, the, the one that's uh, for pleasure is, is basically a hockey book um, about, it's called Bear Town. And it's about a, a hockey team in Sweden uh, and there's a little bit of a mystery on it. So that's that's the pleasure side of me. And, but more from a professional standpoint, I'm going to grab it right now. And so I'm going to step away from the camera real quick and I'm going to come right back. It's in my bag. Hold on. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We, we just go. lost our guest. He'll be right yeah, back. Here, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? I don't know. Okay. Enough well, about me. Enough about me. Enough about me. Okay. Um, this is uh, by Richard Louis. He is um, an NBC News um, anchor and journalist. Richard Louis is going to be a speaker in the Diversity and Fair Housing Summit on the 28th and 29th. So um, basically, the gist of the book 
is about, you know, we've gone, we've, we've come into this age of, of self-promotion, social media, self-promotion, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, and his, he, he's taking a different stance on that. Enough about me. Let's talk about service and connecting. And so I'm, 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 I'm learning. I've, I'm only about three chapters in, so I can't say that I've gotten to the end. because I, I received the book a week and a half ago, but so far I'm engaged. That's awesome. I'm going to have to get that book. It sounds like something we should all read. Thanks for sharing those. Um, so last question. This year, 2021, Illinois Realtors is focusing on the theme of united, strong, and resilient. You've heard me say that a hundred times. What advice can you share with all of our colleagues in the real estate industry on being united, strong, and resilient. Peter, last words, what can you share? Well, first of all, that's a great, uh, great message, great uh, banner line um, to, to live by. Um, so I would say uh, that you, you receive more than you give. And so the only way you can receive is when you kind of become vulnerable you get out there and you try something. Maybe you eat a food that you haven't tried before and you're like, oh, a little nervous on that. But in the end, when you get engaged, you end up receiving more than you actually give. And it's an amazing thing. So um, that's why collaboration with Illinois Realtors, um, other organizations as well, is that collaboration, yes, it takes time, effort, focus, but you walk away usually better yourself, united and, and feeling like you've served. So um, I would just say, follow your passions and uh, sometimes be vulnerable. Put, you know, go to something that maybe you haven't done before and um, see where it leads you. That's the beauty of life is that it'll uh, you know, reward you for that. Peter, thank you so much. This is Sue Miller, your 2021 Illinois Realtors president. That's Peter DeYoung, your 2021 ARIA president. Together, we have learned a little bit more about each other and we've had a great day. Thanks everybody for joining us. 